Okay. All right. Let's uh, get our workshop again. Yeah, that uh, man. I am. They're legal drugs. They're legal drug prescriptions. Yeah, not the prednisone. All right. Let's uh, start the workshop moving here. And we'll wait for Bob. He will be late. Well, the first thing on your agenda this evening will be a public hearing on the next year's fiscal year budget. And then you'll move along into consent agenda and discussion items. You have in front of you um, a new draft of the municipal facilities policy that Dan put together. Um, I had a, an eye. In all my paper shuffling, I have misplaced it. So, I think we could, we could I mean, cross it and then add it next month. Seeing how nobody submitted their changes or anything, I think maybe we just go with. I'm going to get back to it. We can always deny that. Okay, one time, please. If uh, everybody's looked it over and, you know, we can uh, cut and paste or copy or do whatever, and then next month we can approve this. Uh, I was hopeful that we would have a new manager to look it over, but um, obviously that's not going to happen for a, another length of time. So, having said all that, if you look it over and kind of, I think maybe for the speed, maybe we'll just have everyone take and rewrite it. Draft what you think, change, whatever, and then read Yeah, the only question I had was the word cleared. Cleared? Yeah. How far down is that? It's like, it's a, I don't even know if we want to prove. Because do they have the ability to say, no, I'm sorry, you can't talk to this person? I think. You know, I still think that uh, I haven't read it, so I haven't seen it. Um, I would like to digest it some first. That's fine. But it's just, um, yeah. where is it? This word. Yeah. I, I think maybe more like informed. My personal opinion, if we're, we're working in retail where people step out of their place to contact the people that are in the middle of their job, it's talking here about during working hours, if you do not talk to that staff, it should be cleared to the supervisor. Well, it, when they talk, in the piece earlier says you have to schedule it. We have to call and make an appointment to do that. Appointment during working hours with staff who are not just sitting in jur But what if, what if the department chair says, no, I don't well, want you to talk if, to them. What if the department head has them... What are they doing? Well, and then right, but if you're scheduling an appointment, you wouldn't schedule it for that day. I think, yeah, we're... Right, if you're scheduling so, but this right now would give the department chair the authority to say no appointment. If you're trying to, if you call that day, hey, I want an appointment. We'll this gives them the authority to say no appointment at all. That, that's where we need to iron Not it out. Not within a time frame, but no appointment. Uh, okay, then it, it should be referred up to the manager. Why not? See, that's where we, you know. My idea was that they that it would be the responsibility of the staff member to go to their immediate supervisor and say, you know, I want to have this appointment. Is it okay? okay. That, that was my idea. Well, I don't think the staff member should. I think the person who wants the the citizen or the city council member should go make the appointment. They're making the appointment with the staff member. Correct. Oh, so sure. So the staff member then sure. needs to go to their immediate supervisor right. and say, council member Clark, council member... Uh, that should be in there. Mayor wants to have... And, and I think that's totally appropriate. Mm -hmm. my, my issue is... There shouldn't be a way for them to completely negate it. I agree with you. Okay. I see your point. Yeah. Yeah. See, that's what I think is the best okay. thing is to have everybody redraft this. Okay. Because otherwise we're going to... I mean, do you, do you disagree? Here. No, I, I think it's a fair point. I, I guess you're saying, yeah. I think we just need a different word. Okay. So 
Well, so bring it back next time. I would say, you know, I requested we'll it. About it. I'll, I'll try to come up with some different. Like I had said last month, uh, I had the uh, council members draft something and submit to Linda, and obviously it didn't happen. Yeah, well, we took a little busy, Mr. Well, <laughs> me too. It was but a 13 hour meeting. Yeah. You got another one coming, so don't worry. Oh, no. <laughs> but anyway, back to, to, to this at hand. Um, this time, we need to do that. Yeah. Make a draft, um, and then we can yeah. condemn it. <coughs> but there needs to be an out, in my opinion, for uh, one of the employees or staff to say no, to go to the manager to get final. Yes or no, not just a cut and dry that that uh, that we can come and force them to have a meeting. I don't want that. And also, um, I want them to make a appointment where it does not interfere with their daily sure That's their daily perfect. operations or routines. That was the idea of this. Correct, and I know that, that they would go to their supervisor and say. Correct. I've been requested to have this meeting. Does that work? Doesn't it work? Yeah. I think we're, we're all there. We just need to get it more okay. uh, clarification here. Okay. So, everybody okay with that? Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay, let's just go there. Um, I also provided you some information on the tax tribunal. Mm -hmm. um, it's quite a lot of information. I don't know if you have the opportunity to absorb it all that's the end. Um, yeah, I've been through it and it's a lot to do, but you know, I'm thinking, you know, how, how was your the request on um, you received any information back from the county? They did not want to give any information out. I guess it was <laughs> that's, that's I, convenient. Yes, well, I guess the <laughs> next step is work. I guess our next step would be the FOIA. I asked about pointing it. Actually, I had Jason talk to them. And, That's um, like putting a hand in the hand now. No, I was right there when he talked to them, and it was perfectly above board. And uh, I asked Jason about pointing the information, and he said that it's nothing that they have in writing, that, and in, under FOIA, you don't have to create a document. Wow! So just to make sure that I follow this. We don't have to create documents that people have. Right, but, but no, I'm not have. disputing that. But right. just to make sure that I understand what you just said correctly. So in asking the county about what they are taxed on, they stated they have nothing in writing about what they are taxed on. Did I understand correctly? They didn't say that. They said that they did not want to provide that information. And then I asked Jason about FOIA, making it as a FOIA request. And he said that they don't have it, anything written down, and that under FOIA, you don't have to Okay, so that. again, to clarify what Molly said, they have no written record of what they tax themselves on. Yeah. Well, but then they need to say that. Doesn't that have to be public record? Well, I, I, would assume, I can call them again and try to ruin some more information. Because, I mean, you yeah. have no written documentation of what you tax yourself on. I guess I, I, I have options. They levy a tax against us when they don't do that themselves, to themselves. Could, can we, could we say, I'm sorry, we have no documentation about what we tax ourselves on? It's the jurisdiction itself that would be levying the tax against them. Okay. If the county has in, um, property within the right. municipality's boundaries, it would be the municipality that would be levying the tax. Right. So again, okay. we're being asked to tax ourselves as a city. Could we respond with, I'm terribly sorry, we have no documentation there? I have a... Okay, just a second. Okay, I'm gonna say. So, what, what I think I understand you saying is, for instance, if the county had property in Rockford, Rockford would be the jurisdiction that would levy the tax against them. Correct. So the county might not necessarily have that documentation. You would have to go each to each individual municipality that may or may not be taxing. I don't think so. Because okay. there isn't space that's so, strictly county, like a county park. Well, you have so, a piece of property right out here. 
Right. And that's in Solon Township, so Solon would be responsible for right. taxing okay. them or not. But there's no sign on it that says it's county property, public property. And, yeah, there would be and, a and if you read Crystal's response about signing, she said that there uh, isn't anything that absolutely has to be done. It's just something that you could do should you want to make it more public. To but isn't that Jason's to position that we have to have signage on it or we have to tax ourselves? Yes. I didn't well, the question. Uh, isn't Jason's <coughs> position that as a city, we have to do it ourselves unless we have a sign saying it's public property? Or on maps. It doesn't have to have a sign on it. That's just one thing that you could do to let people know that it was available for public use. That's not an absolute necessity. I think you should do that anyway. Well, it's a game. Is, is, is this just a reprisal against us because we're challenging or questioning his uh, taxing of? Uh, the, the Skyhawk Club, because the note that I have here, it says, portion of the property that is leased to the Fly Club, yep, we will know. Um, per legal counsel, there should be evidence, i.e., a sign, map, etc., open to public. What document are you looking at, Terry? This one here is from you on. The Adjust Plug It, right? March. Uh, 21 of 16. No, this one, this one's this the is one Jason contacted You that. sent me that of the one, two, three, four, five, six parcels Maybe that we had lost our tax. Oh, okay. And it says we have to have a sign. And then last month we asked, okay, how many signs and what? And then Crystal from our right. attorney says, well, no, you don't have to have a sign. So, whoa, mm -hmm. whoa. Is this a... This isn't anything Jason is doing. Crystal is the one that wrote the original memo. But Jason asked her for the opinion, correct? Mm -hmm. the, and the then opinion. I asked her again to clarify it, which is included in your packet. So yeah. we need a sign, but we don't need a sign. I would like to know why the information and the clarification that you received from Crystal wasn't a portion of what she wrote in defense of what Jason was doing. That certainly would have balanced the whole situation a lot. It just irritates me that lawyers like to play one Money. side that they think is the side that we want or that somebody wants. They give you that information, and now we get the other side. Well, anyway, nothing we can do about that. Well, long and short of it, I guess we would have to. Question. Can we ask our county commissioner to step in on this? Well, that's <laughs> that's an county and they don't want to tell us. Well, maybe our commissioner will. I know he's got some property. Yeah. He's um, listening to sure. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong brother <laughs> So here, there's our, our dilemma. So like, I'm getting like different information and it's like conflict and it's yet, I'm, I'm coming to the conclusion and I've talked to several uh, other taxing Officer or tax, you know, assessors, and they're saying this is just him. That there's no real law says it has to be on, other than the only one that we have um, is with the Skyhawk Club, and we demonstrated that it is open to the public, but yet it's his opinion that we have to pay the tax if somebody does, and all that now we we Unless ask. Unless you put up a sign, it comes up and put up a sign. Yeah. <laughs> So, Are you seriously? Mm -hmm. Well, why don't I contact the county myself and see what I can come up with from them? My, uh, I would. Other than that, it would be contacting municipalities to see if they have county property within their their borders and if they're taxing them or not. Well, I would, I would think. Um, the, the county must have a line item in their budget. If indeed they do pay tax to any municipality, one would think, at least, that they would have a line item property taxes. I, I guess not being familiar with the county level, I'm not certain if that's the way it works. But 
the one that controls the DNR man. Okay. The state will is exempt from it, but they pay a, a, a portion of monies to the townships for that uh, in lieu of that property tax. Uh, the state of Michigan is exempt from any property tax, um, and then uh, Kent County is not, and neither is the local municipality. Yeah, that's the, the language of the law yeah. when we looked it up. In, in, um, <laughs> I thought we'll just let this property go back to the county and we get first right of refusal on it. <laughs> Or, you know, and I've said this before, that any properties or monies that, that is levied against the city for taxes will come out of the assessor's line item. And I think any litigation we do, if we go the next step, will come out of the assessor's budget. I, I had a question. I, please. Sure. In, uh, in my mind, if we take this to the, the county to fight it, that we will have to secure another attorney firm because of what uh, we've already received an opinion from our attorney, Morgan, or Morgan. Slugget Morgan, because they wrote the opinion already and he's using that, so how can we use our attorney to fight ourselves against them? Mm -hmm. um, I've had contact with some other assessors. Um, they just kind of shake their head, and it says, uh, I don't get any much more than that, but they have offered uh, to help us and to recommend a legal firm to uh, retain. Mr. Mayor, can I oh. ask a question? Go ahead. I just wanted to know, how is it okay for Jason to go to our attorney and have him write an opinion. Crystal is the one who represents the city and all the tax tribunal issues that the assessor has, so that's who he went to to get an opinion. But, yeah. the, but the attorney works for us, right? Well, so is he. What? So is he, and that's how no. No, he does not work for us. He, he works for, for the, the city, city manager. The attorney works for the council. We have full control over him. So he doesn't work the council, but the attorney doesn't work the city? Um, the, the chain of command is yeah, I know that the attorney the okay. answers to the city council, not the city manager. Like, the only two people that, res that, that answer directly to the council are the city manager and the attorney. Per the charter. Per the charter. Everybody else answers to the city manager. So my question is, why are other employees going to the city attorney without council approval? That's what I want to know. And if they can, like, what's the threshold? Can any city employee call up the city attorney at any time for any reason? At two hundred and whatever dollars an hour? Okay. Um. I mean, I just I. I don't know. Like, that was my question. Did Jason ask permission if he could talk to the attorney about this? He did? When did we vote on that? Yes, I gave him permission. But, he, to but the attorney works for us. Okay, but in the future, okay. <laughs> the attorney works for us. If the attorney is going to work on behalf of someone that isn't directly us, if it isn't the mayor contacting the attorney, shouldn't that have to come to us? Well, that's some guidelines I guess we'll have to put to the manager. That's um, one of my, like, maybe we need a policy on this? No. In a way. Okay. Just, so, well, it's, but it's not done going forward. I mean, I'm not even talking about, like, I'm not saying there should be problems or reprimands. I'm saying we can't have everybody that ever works for the city contacting the attorney anytime they want in any capacity they want. Like, that's not okay. 
Most staff people can usually come to the city manager and ask permission. They don't call willy-nilly to the attorney. But why is the city manager giving that approval? The attorney works for us. But the manager does represent us. If so. we ask them to. But if, they, if it's something that comes up that they need a training confident on, do we have to have a special meeting in between, or do they have to wait until the next city council meeting to I figure it out? I feel like we need some language that outlines that. Because honestly, we had this problem previously of the city manager going in capacities we didn't want. Mm -hmm. in, in, on issues we didn't feel comfortable with, getting language we didn't like, and that we then ended up paying an awful lot of money for. I mean, am I wrong? No. Is there a certain amount of hours or some retaining with the city attorney? Or no, it's like by the hour. By the hour every time they call? Well, this here has caused a lot of grief. Okay. Well, I just, I just felt like since we're here, we need to Agreed. have that conversation. Mm -hmm. Or it's going to keep happening. Okay. So how are you going to let um, staff or the city manager contact the attorney? What will, what will be your guidelines for that? I think we need to figure that out. Yeah. Especially for, you know, if I think a lot of this incident right here with the tax assessor is what brought a lot of this emotion up. It's like we're fighting ourselves. <coughs> it's like, why? You know, it, it, um, the tax tribunal that met here, they basically went on the opinion mm -hmm. of the city attorney and, and for whatever, it's like they loaded the deck against ourselves. I think that's the emotion and the, the hard feelings here. It's, you know, if there's a legal issue by all means outside of the city then there has to be leeway but um, there's been in the past some some problems with the use of the attorney um, in drafting some languages and all the above and I think now we're, we're at a crossroads or a turning point that we need to something needs to happen you know we're fighting ourselves we're fighting ourselves, you know, like, you know, I've said this before, you know, we, we spent $20,000 for this library fighting the attorneys and fighting ourselves, you know, drafting language over and over again and wordsmithing. And that's why I advised the library anymore wordsmithing that they were going to pay the legal fees. Well, um, if, if I can add on to that, like, it was very frustrating when... Yes, you will. When, um, um like, I'm sorry, do you want me to stop? Well, <laughs> I mean, we're in a workshop. I didn't know. Do you want We're, we're kind of going nowhere fast, but yet we're getting a lot of emotions out, I guess. Well, I'm just saying, there, there's clearly some conflict. Like, when we had the language with the library, to kind of reiterate the problem as we try to figure out how to fix the policy, we would get language from the manager, and we yep. would say, that's not what we thought we were doing. You would call Jeff. Jeff would say, no, that wasn't my intention of what that language was supposed to say. We would talk about it. New well, language would come back. Um, and what right, I'm saying, this is part of what we're talking about. We're trying to address the policy of who has the authority to talk to the attorney when we're talking about what it is we're looking for. And we ended up in this weird circle with the manager and the attorney and the counsel and I, I think the attorney felt like he was kind of stuck in the middle. He was. He felt that. And, and, and I don't know how we fix that if we don't clarify, like, this is the policy of who goes to the attorney and when they go there. And I'm not saying the manager shouldn't ever go. I'm saying there, sh there should be some structure of how and what that looks like. <coughs> okay. Um. See, I was never aware that there was ever a problem between um, the manager or allowing oh staff to call. I was never aware of any of that. Oh, my goodness. Well, you were on the other side or not in that, but it was there was some things. So, you know, instead of dragging up all the what's going on, let's um, look forward. And I've said that several times. Yeah, I'm not trying to drag it up. I'm just trying to How say there's clearly an issue here. I think we need to come together here between the manager or interim manager. Um, in this council on how are we going to move forward on this 
so we don't have any more of these issues. Um, I've had several lengthy conversations with Mr. Sluggett, and uh, they, we, we've been moving forward. Does he have any recommendations on how we handle this? I did not talk to him about that at all. It was all current issues and stuff we're dealing with now. Well, I was talking about more the um, this taxation piece. And like, have, does he uh, recommend we get another attorney? Does I haven't talked to anybody okay. because the council has not set me in that direction. Good enough. That's fair enough. Other than I've got some information on uh, potential firms that we could uh, hire to represent us at the next level of our taxation site. Do you think it would be appropriate, Mr. Mayor, to talk to Mr. Sluggett and explain the bind well, that you feel like we're in and ask if he has a recommendation? Of all, first of all, we need to set the direction. Last month, everybody wanted to get information. We did. Now, if this is the voice of the council or the director, I will make that conversation with him. But last month, I didn't have that at all. Sure. So, when we get into the meeting, would you like a motion? Do you that? Well, I think a consensus more than anything. I don't think we need to have a motion, but I didn't want to speak for the council. I'll give you a motion if you want. It's appropriate. Of yeah. course it's appropriate. So, so when we get there, if that's the, the, the consensus of the seated council here, I will contact Mr. Sluggett and see what um, <coughs> issues we can do to resolve this. You know, in the next effort, how do we stop this taxation amounts on ourselves? You know, um, I know there was um, some angst about the assessor to put a vote of no confidence, but it, uh, in the description has been stated that we can do that. But in anyway, the legal counsel agree with that, um, and I reminded everybody that uh, he works for the the manager that seated, not the council, and we've all kept our distance. Yes, but to clarify, because again, I got, res I got a response from Mr. Sluggett on that, and he told me it is well within our purview to make a vote of no confidence. Okay, so. I can I can share that, I have it, I have it in writing. And he shared with me that the only way you could have a vote of no confidence is for you to do that with one of your own council members. Not mm -hmm. No, that's not what it says. I, well, I, can I have that it. email too, Pam. I can show you too. I, perhaps it would be wise to consult another lawyer. I feel that Mr. Sluggett, through the very best of intentions, is, is giving everyone the information they ask for, but perhaps we are all interpreting it differently, and maybe a new voice would clarify it for us. Maybe. Maybe we should save more of this discussion for an actual meeting. Let's go get on with the rest of the workshop. Sure. Sounds um, okay. But I don't want to drag this out for an hour either. Otherwise, so. well, we'll have the meeting over before we're done with the workshop. Indeed. Okay, move on. Yeah. The next item on your agenda would be a, a DDA recommendation. They would like to see all crosswalks painted from Beach Street to Maple Street, and they want to have pedestrian crossing signs at each inter intersection. And they wanted to request that of the City Council. Your next item is um, you have received a right of first refusal, refusal rather, from Kent County about two foreclosed properties within the city limits, and you have to tell them yay or nay if you would want to purchase them or you're not interested. And those are included in the packet. Then we move on to action items, and your first action item is to approve um, the resolution to adopt the annual budget. And your second action item is to establish the millage rate for real and personal property for the coming fiscal year. And then item C is the fee schedule, which you will be adopting as well if you see fit. The next item is um, the technology use and electronics records policy that you discussed last month. And your other is the recording of public meetings policy amendment that was on your agenda last month. Also included in your packet, the amended Planning Commission bylaws. They've added the language of using Robert's Rules of Order in their bylaws, which is what um, the council wanted to see. 
And your next item is the approval of the renaming of the Cedar Springs Library building. This, um, I received an email from Tony Owens, the secretary of the library board this morning, and he wanted to make sure that you were aware you were only approving the naming of the building and that they were not changing the name on any of their other documentation. Excuse me. I have to tell you today, he was very concerned that we not have that we did get a look at the document that he sent to you. I don't know if you got that, you know, printed up for everybody. Or I was going to print that out, but I can go do that in between okay. and whatever. Okay. That would let me keep my word to him. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I did get that too, and I brought it in, in uh, my shuffling of paper this evening to go here. I, I thought so. I had printed it off, but it wasn't at the printer when I went picked up everything else, so I obviously didn't do it. Yeah, that would be the fastest about printing. Thank program. you for that, Linda. And your next items are all um, purchases for the wastewater treatment plant. If you have any questions regarding that, Tom is here and he can fill you in. Then you have communications, which are pretty standard. Um, and then you go into department reports. On, uh, for action items, uh, we would, I would like to add item K, which would be uh, discussion and decision, and uh, it be a motion to go back to MML for our selection process for another five individuals. Do we want a number on it? Number K. Five, or do you want me to just say another no. panel? It's item K. Right. Panel. You oh, said geez. five individuals. I'm saying maybe it's four, maybe it's That's six. That's what we need to discuss, how many more we want. You know. Right. So, so would you like the language to say a panel rather than five? I feel like that would be better. Let's not lock ourselves in. A what? A panel of individuals. If, we, if, we, if in the motion we say five. Okay. We're it has to, to five. be five. Okay. There might be six that are wonderful, or there might only be two that are wonderful. So I, four. Oh, yeah. yeah. I feel like... Fifteen hours, ninety. Listen, guy, I ain't got it in me. Let's just come right down to it. I can't. Okay, whatever. <laughs> that's whatever the the, the board so, does, does so desires. Panel, panel work. Panel. Group. Group. Okay. 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 Just no names and num and with just numbers. Um, still a fan of 44. And then I I'm guess still a fan of 44 too. Um, basically, is what we would do is send the, that recommendation back to MML and have them get a hold of us on. Um, and I will say we'll have a panel of from of our existing pool of candidates to do another round of interviews. For the sake of clarity, uh, I know that Mr. Buter uh, has been. Okay, we, I just assume not any names or anything or okay. not work or work, but I, I'm, I will find out. And it was a question that if we could, after we interview these next panel, that we could also look at the ones we did last week. Yeah. My question without any names mm -hmm. is, should we vote on this to go back to the well? Are we absolutely locked into doing so? Should any other situations change? Well, um, and I can address that further in. The last word that I got from him was he would have to stick to his word and he could not come. Okay. So by having said that, um, that pretty much I did offer him that uh, the position would be open for probably the next three weeks. But I think once we get the final commitment from MML to move forward, I think his... Uh, selection would be off the table unless something major league happened. Okay. I had a similar conversation with a similar result. Yeah. Okay. So it's pretty much a done deal. He's not coming because of family matters. So that's why I'm recommending that we go back to MML to re-interview our existing candidates from the pool that we had selected from in the first place. Okay. So it's the council's wishes. Well, no, that'll be on the agenda. That'll be item K. Item K to add to the agenda. Well, we don't have much choice, but we have to go back and some more. Yeah. 
I think um, the people that, you know, of the 20 candidates that did fit our criteria, in all fairness, it's like maybe there's a diamond hidden in there somewhere. And for the sake of them, let's, let's give them a chance to at least interview. So what have we got to lose? Yeah, we want to do what's best for the city. You know, this is a, an impact on the city for 20 years or more. <coughs> so. And we'll get that off on the computer. All right, we got about six minutes.